And the Lord gave Moses the Ten Commandments. And he read the Ten Commandments to the children of Israel. He was reading it so they knew what to do personally, but he read it over an entire people group and a nation saying, this is what we are to live by. Wow. When they made that golden calf in the wilderness... It's called a Serapis bull. When Moses had to cry out for mercy for the children of Israel. We were just in Egypt and we'll be going back soon. And I'm going to shift here in a minute. (laughs) But we were in Alexandria where Alexander the Great ruled in Egypt and who was named after him. And from there, (laughs) great authority over many nations that he gained. And they worshipped a form of the Queen of Heaven there, Isis. And down below, there are caves. And when you go down these caves... And you go to this little, well, you know, you, you don't know it's there unless you have someone that shows you that it's there. They took us to the underground location where they worshipped that Serapis bull under Alexander the Great, which became Alexandria. And as we made our way underneath the ground in that cave system to the very back of the wall, we stood face to face with the Serapis bull that they worship. (sighs) So we prayed. We'll be going back. Why am I telling you this? Because here in Ridgecrest and in California, the Lord is anointing warriors to contend over cities and regions and people group and structures to see these principalities defeated. And so we're going to talk about... (laughs) Tonight, the fire of the Holy Spirit and the resurrection power of Jesus that we carry just as Jesus carried because the Spirit that rose Him from the grave is alive in us. It's Holy Spirit. Now, when they would defeat these principalities, and you read in the Word of God, especially manifestations of this entity, they would burn her in the fire. Read the book of Revelation. When Babylon is destroyed, meaning the queen of heaven's structure, it will be in fire. It's the same word that we have when we receive the Holy Spirit of fire. P-Y-R. What does that mean? Per. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Am I saying it right? When we, we have this fire of the Holy Spirit, it means that we are set ablaze, that we are set on fire, but then it means there will be a discord that it causes a discord and it will cause those things of darkness. That judgment, the enlightened judgment of Jesus that he has already declared as victorious on the cross resides in us. So when we get that fire, not only are we like, Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, we want more of you. Holy Spirit, baptize me fresh. 
It means that it is causing every demon that has harassed me to be tormented with the punishment that Jesus has already released into the Satan and his army of darkness. It means that we cause a discord in the spirit realm. So you ready? I'm going to read to you Luke 3.16. But John made it clear telling them, There is one coming who is mightier than I. Everybody say, Jesus! Jesus, Jesus the victorious! Are y'all awake? There is one coming who is mightier than I. He is supreme. Everybody say, he is supreme. supreme. (laughs) In fact, I'm not worthy of even being his slave. I can only baptize you in the river, but he will baptize you into the spirit of holiness and into his raging fire. When we're baptized in this, it, and I know you guys understand this, but we're going on the journey. It means that we're washed, that we're cleansed. It means that we come into an experience and an encounter with him. And this fire, it literally means that there is a combustion. How many of you want to combust? Combustion a fire. Woo, I'm just saying, and I've said, shared this here before. How many of you have heard of Catherine Coleman, right? Ooh, right? And they would say, literally, when you hear Benny Hinn talk about her, he never talked to her one-on-one, but he was in her meetings. And when he would go in, he said the first time she came out, he said all he saw on her face was a flame of fire. And then she was speaking, and this was to the private meeting of the leaders, and he was like dry, like going with the church leaders, so he got to go in, you know, on the bus with them. So he got to go in, and he got to sit down, and she was up talking about Holy Spirit, and talking about His presence, and talking about the fire, and talking about how awesome He is. And then all of a sudden, he said she put her face down on the podium, and she began to weep, and she looked up, and she said, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Please. And she was weeping. Don't grieve him. Don't grieve him. Then he said it was him. Because she was talking about the healings and the miracles. And he'd never been in a meeting like that.